Is a romantic relationship between a district attorney and a special prosecutor enough to derail a high-profile criminal case? Welcome to a world of legal drama where Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade find themselves entangled in a web of allegations. The plot thickens with whispers of a supposed romantic involvement, lavish vacations, and the financial compensation received by Wade. But the stakes are high. This isn't just any case. It involves none other than former President Donald Trump and his 18 co-defendants. Enter Michael Roman, another co-conspirator, who has filed a motion seeking to disqualify Willis and Wade from the case. The basis? A conflict of interest. But here's the twist. Does the alleged relationship and the ensuing scandal indeed constitute a conflict of interest that could potentially compromise the fair prosecution of Roman and his co-defendants? Or is this just another chapter in the saga of public opinion and sensational headlines? While such allegations may stir public debate, do they hold water in the eyes of the law? As we delve deeper, we'll explore these questions and more, all in the pursuit of truth. Stay tuned. Norman L. Eisen, Joyce Vance and Richard Painter, three legal experts have taken a deep dive into the allegations and Georgia law. These professionals have meticulously analyzed the charges circling Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. Their focus lies in the motion filed by Michael Roman, a co-defendant of Donald Trump, which seeks to disqualify Willis and Wade based on an alleged conflict of interest. This trio of legal scholars has dissected the specific allegations made in Roman's motion, examining each one under the magnifying glass of Georgia's legal framework. They explored the alleged romantic relationship between Willis and Wade, the financial compensation received by Wade as a special prosecutor, and the shared vacations they reportedly undertook. Each facet of these allegations was scrutinized against the stringent criteria for prosecutorial disqualification in Georgia. The expert's analysis reveals that a conflict of interest according to Georgia law must involve a genuine risk of improper conviction or treatment of a defendant. The alleged personal failings or ethical concerns related to Willis and Wade's professional relationship they argue do not impact the fairness of the trial or the defendant's right to due process. Thus, these allegations, even if proven true, do not necessarily constitute a conflict of interest that would compromise the fair prosecution of Roman and his co-defendants. According to these experts, even if the allegations are true, they do not create a conflict that would compromise the fair prosecution of the defendants. What are the legal criteria for disqualification of a prosecutor in Georgia? Let's break it down. In the Peach State, prosecutorial disqualification isn't taken lightly. The law requires a high bar to be met before a prosecutor is removed from a case. The essential principle is the presence of a genuine conflict of interest that could adversely affect the fair treatment or the proper conviction of a defendant. Such a conflict typically arises when the prosecutor's personal interests or relationships might compromise their impartiality or integrity. Now let's consider the three main allegations. The first is the supposed romantic relationship between District Attorney Willis and Special Prosecutor Wade. Legally speaking, personal relationships don't automatically constitute a conflict of interest unless they can be shown to influence the objectivity of the prosecutor. In this case, the relationship must directly affect the prosecution of the case against Trump and his co-defendants. The second allegation involves financial compensation. Wade's salary as a special prosecutor is under scrutiny. However, financial transactions between prosecutors don't necessarily create a conflict unless it can be proven that the compensation was intended to influence the prosecutor's actions in a specific case. Lastly, we consider the shared personal travels. Once again, these don't inherently present a conflict of interest. The law doesn't prohibit prosecutors from vacationing together unless such actions could be directly linked to a compromise of the case at hand. In all these instances, the key is showing a direct link between the alleged actions and a potential compromise of the fair and proper conduct of the case. It's not enough to suggest a conflict of interest. It must be proven that such a conflict presents a genuine risk to the defendant's rights to a fair trial and due process. The question then becomes, do Willis and Wade's actions meet these criteria? Despite the controversy surrounding Willis and Wade, our legal experts argue that a conflict of interest, as defined by Georgia law, does not exist. 
This might come as a surprise to many, but these experts have meticulously examined the allegations against Willis and Wade in light of the rigid legal frameworks governing prosecutorial disqualification in Georgia. The alleged romantic relationship, the financial compensation, and the shared travels, each of these elements have been scrutinized. Collectively or individually, they do not meet the stringent criteria for a conflict of interest under Georgia law. The law requires that any conflict must carry a genuine risk of improper conviction or unfair treatment of a defendant. This, according to our experts, is not the case here. The personal failings or ethical concerns surrounding Willis and Wade's professional relationship do not impact the fairness of the trial or the defendant's right to due process. But let's not forget the human element in all of this. While the law may not see a conflict, the court of public opinion is another matter. The ongoing controversy could be a distraction, potentially impacting the work of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. To this end, our experts have proposed a solution. They suggest the possibility of a voluntary resignation by Wade. While this would not be an admission of guilt, it could help to dispel the ongoing concerns. This would allow the District Attorney's Office to continue its duties without unnecessary delays or distractions. An amicable resolution such as this could go a long way in keeping the focus on the task at hand, ensuring the case proceeds in the most effective manner. The Trump election conspiracy case is a high-stakes legal battle where the accurate application of the law is paramount. The controversy surrounding Willis and Wade is a distraction but not a legal impediment. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.